Does this your award here? Yes, I always carry it with me. Yeah, just to for affirmation to remind myself that I was yeah that uh, the industry once respected me. Yeah. <laughs>
our prosthetic legs. I think it's time we got the chaser back on the cover of the Rolling Stone. Well, I think fans are really into nostalgia, so let's let's keep talking. Now, um, one thing that fascinates me about the whole music industry at the moment is the advent of AI. Literally this morning, someone played me a Beatles song that was AI generated. It was really good. And I would swear it was indistinguishable. Like I, I defy any diehard Beatles fan not to tell it was an original one. Where do you sit on this? Do you find this exciting or do you find this heresy? Both. So I think, you know, you look at the TV and film industry and I think that that's where it's most scary because we, our artists, our songwriters, our composers, they earn so much from TV and film sync deals and compositions. And then what if those production houses just decided, let's just make it AI generated music? Like that would be a huge rug pull of revenue. But outside of that, I think it's kind of exciting for artists to see how they can be assisted by AI. Um, but I also think that it's a bit hard to replace that fan connection that fans have with artists. You can't, you can't have an, an artist and a fan be as deeply connected as they are now if you're involving a robot. That's my opinion. It's interesting though, because I was looking at the response of Beatles fans to this new Beatles AI generated song. And yeah, half of them were disgusted and just thought this was, you know, absolutely heresy. The other half were really emotional, going, oh, there's new Beatles material. Like, there could be endless more John and Paul collaborations. They were really excited. They knew it was, you know, a robot, but they also thought we're getting music that sounds just as good as what they were doing. So there's this sort of infinite promise, in a way, in AI. Yeah, and then I guess the artists could still earn from that, right? Because then there's this huge influx of new music fans who are maybe not across the Beatles who are now going, oh, who's that? They're really good. I'll pull up their discography and then have that climb the charts and then, you know, kind of everyone wins in a way. And I'm sure it's terrifying record executive, record company executives. They're all going, oh, where's the money in this? We need to shut down the IP and all of this. But I thought Grimes, of all the artists I've seen weigh in on this, has had a really interesting position. Grimes is sort of accepted AI, like a lot of sectors outside of music are going, well, no, this isn't the enemy. This is a tool like the internet was a tool. We need to work out how to work with it. And Grimes, I understand, has put out the offer that anyone who produces a hit using her voice and her genre, she will split the revenue with 50-50. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I love that. But that's so Grimes. She's a total futurist. She's totally with it when it comes to any kind of tech and stuff like that. Um, I did see she tweeted this morning that an artist did use her voice to create a song. And she said this was really cool, but it didn't really sound like Grimes. So I don't think she's picking that one to split her revenue with. Uh, final question. Who are, you who are you listening to at the moment? Who are you loving? Uh, loving Budra, as I mentioned. I'm loving Luca George. He is a Kiwi artist. He's only released like four songs, alt pop, but very exciting, incredible songwriter. And then I'm really into the current era of Tina Arena. Are you a fan of Tina? What? What? Yeah. I've hang on, hang on. We need to get a new editor of Rolling Stone. <laughs> Tina Arena, the, the Australian who was on Young Talent Time and now lives in Paris? Well, she actually lives in Melbourne now, right. um, but she's using her voice in a really interesting way. She's being very outspoken. She's at this level of her career where she really doesn't give a... Can I swear? Yeah. She doesn't really give a fuck. So she's able to champion artists, champion certain things that she's very passionate about in a really real way, and I love the way she's being an activist right now. We actually named her... Um, we gave her a Rolling Stone Icon Award at our last awards and she actually wrote our last editor's letter in the last magazine. Well, there you go. We began this interview where I was the old dude and we've ended where you're someone who loves Tina Arena is sounding pretty old to me, but I love that people can come full circle. I've really enjoyed the chat. Poppy Reed, thank you so much for chatting with B&T TV. Yeah.